Varför drar ni inte upp rullgardinen? Så jag kommer att börja med att säga att jag tror att det här är Bergmans mest konventionella film till date. Ja, jag skulle agree att det är... Jag skulle säga att det är klischéer, men det är definitivt... Common, he uses common ways at looking at the characters and the plot in this film. But there was a lot of reason for this. I mean, he had just come off of a ship to India, which wasn't exactly a financial success. In fact, at this point, Bergman hadn't had a financial success. Yeah, that ship sank. So, <laughs> music, music and Darkness was essentially structured to be a financial success. You can see it in the film. It feels a little bit Hollywood, not a lot, but there are touches of it in there. And he didn't have to completely sacrifice the Bergman traits that you would identify. So this movie, uh, the main plot of it, Music and Darkness, the title is referring to the main character who is blind. And um, one thing that's really interesting is he's not quite like other blind characters. Usually those characters have some sort of vision beyond sight, um, a, a smarter view of the world. In fact, here it's quite the opposite. It's true. So, um, plot-wise, what happens is we have this upper-class gentleman who has a shooting rage accident, he's some type of officer, uh, which leaves him blinded. Mm -hmm. And instead of, you know, overcoming his disability and gaining some kind of deeper wisdom or self-awareness, he overcompensates by the disability by becoming excessively proud, isolating himself from the world, punishing people that try to care for him. And um, so he has like a, a reverse fortune where he goes from the upper classes and slowly rung by rung by rung gets declassified in society. Meanwhile, the girl who starts to care for him, the servant girl in the household, um, and who you know unwisely falls in love with him, she, through the rejection that he so kindly bestows on her, um, decides to improve herself and goes to school. Um, university, gets educated, becomes literate, and, and then their paths intersect later in life when he's quite, you know, hit rock bottom more or less, and she's at the top of her upswing, and they, they reconnect that way. So, so that's all has to do with music in some ways. How does the music fit? The music is interesting. I, I know it's in the title, so right away we kind of assume that it has some kind of superlative meaning and that it's really significant to everything. But in this reality, again, like you said, it's it's he's not overcomplicating things in the film. And music, in my opinion, it's really um, it's kind of the only tool that's left for him. He it's lost, how they bond, though, right? It's how they bond. It's it's his only way of communicating with anyone at this point yeah. because he's become so misanthropic. He doesn't want to involve himself in society. So music has become his only way that he can relate to people and that people can kind of relate to him. Uh, I'll go back to what you were mentioning before the uh, shooting range accident in which mm -hmm. this all comes from. It sort of establishes his early character, which is kind of strange. I think when we watched it, we were scratching our heads because essentially he's at the shooting range mm -hmm. and he rescues a cute puppy from, from, the guns. from danger, from the yeah. guns. Um, and it sort of establishes what he was before he went blind. Which is what? Uh, 
a, like a puppy a, lover? I don't know. A like sensitive, you, that, yeah, sensitive, like a sensitive type, man. I, guess. I think it's Bergman's sort of easy way of establishing the character, and I don't think it really works in the film. In fact, it's no, probably it, one of the. It's disconnected, right? I think what's interesting for me about this film is that we now have a fourth feature of it which still continues with the same kind of characterization that he's evolving and yeah. for me I recognize this linkage as this exploration of a crisis of masculinity I think it's very very prominently noticeable so if you think of all the male protagonists that we've had up to this point they have fallen short of kind of the social ideal of man in the first film Crisis we have Jack the suicidal drunken playboy um, in the second film, we have the hapless young man who can't seem, you know, to set his life straight, gets in trouble with the law, and is now a convict. Then we have Johannes in the third film, a ship to India, who's a disfigured, almost hunchback-like figure, trying to win his father's approval. And here we have Bain, who, you know, kind of falls from grace by becoming blind and has this disability, is essentially an invalid throughout the whole film. So what's Bergman saying about men, or what is he? What is he? What's he doing here? I think maybe he's trying to say that men, either men need to redeem themselves or maybe they need to stop being so hard, on, or that maybe the social expectations for men are, they don't allow room for, you know, failing, learning, moving on. Mm -hmm. Like you always have to be at this kind of strange benchmark. Um, and I think this maybe, like in all the films he has this uh, critique against standards, like social standards, whether they're socioeconomic or um, standards of propriety, you know, like you have to be this way. Um, he comments a lot about, you know, marriage expectations and church and state, as we've seen, and it rains on our love. So I, I, I just, I think he dislikes those kind of boundaries mm -hmm. that really frame people and don't let them be human. I agree with you there. Um, one of the criticisms I think we had of this movie, aside from that puppy sequence, was some... <laughs> yes, that was a big criticism. <laughs> some sort of m montage artistic work oh. that Bergman is known for his religious, uh, his approach at, at, at death. And um, that is something that we're going to see in The Seventh Seal at some point, because this is most famous film. Um, but we've seen it here, um, when Bank gets sort of pulled into the pits of hell. We see it literally, where he is dragged into the mud, and hands, which aren't really connected to any identifiable body, sort of yank him into the pits of hell. And it's this weird sequence that, I think Burn must have been experimenting, I don't know, with drugs? No. Um, <laughs> he was he just drops on acid. Yeah, <laughs> he, was, he was experimenting maybe with the, where he could take cinema, because this is definitely not something you could have done on the live stage. But we get this sequence with a goldfish in a bowl. And Floating, these, yeah, these, it's like an overlay. Yeah, and this is kind these, of siren. It was hard to like really connect what what it meant, right? Because yeah. the film, as we said when we started talking, was that it had a lot of conventional elements, yeah. you know? And then this kind of surrealist montage was really... Out of left field. <laughs> but, I mean, aside from that, um, we liked this movie. I mean, it wasn't a bad film. It was. It's definitely a a step in the right direction for Bergman. Yeah, I think in this, like, there's still that residual heavy-handedness, but somehow you connect more with the character. He pulls more at your heartstrings. I mean, he's created a character through the script that is really relatable in some sense, and you can sort of connect with him on a basic human level. Yeah, I agree. I think it, I like the fact that now even though we've only watched four films, we can look back and say, hey, look, there's a pattern, like he's doing something. Pieces um, are coming yeah, together. Yeah, so that's, I'm enjoying that. And I'm, and I'm looking to see if some of the new elements, like for example, the surrealist montage, if something like that is going to reappear again. This one, is it worth it? Would you say this is a must? Um, wow, it's, you know what? Considering that there's like 63 films, it, I don't think it's a must. Really? I disagree on this one. I think it yeah. is a must. I think there's a true progression here. We'd love to have you guys weigh in, so let us know um, if you agree with me, which you should. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Yes. Also, our next film is Port of Call. That's number five. Five. And uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for breaking down Bergen with us.